Guys, it is Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Still not feeling my best, but I, I got through today's work, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, I made it through the day, let's put it that way. So I'm home. Gotta do this side right here. These are the pads I just took off, or the shoes I just took off the passenger side. And if you look this way, they look pretty good. See how thick they are? See the rivets? You can still see, you know, there's still plenty of meat on there. But this one, <laughs> this one, you can see the rivets are just about ready to start grinding. And uh, so why is it like that? I don't know. This is the way I found it. So I figured might as well change the shoes while I'm doing all this other stuff, so, you know, while I got it apart. So I'm putting new shoes on there. Well, in case you didn't know, the uh, brake shoes on these Broncos, probably F-150s, same thing. Uh, you got two different size shoes. In other words, this one here has more brake material on it than this one here. And that's just the way they are. I don't know why. There's probably some kind of meaning to it. But you got one, one face is the front and one goes in the back. So they're coming pairs. A big one and a little one, a big one and a little one. <laughs> so before you take them apart, check how they are. You get, there's a lot of little parts here. Remember how, how to put them back together. So it can get confusing, especially all the little springs and all that stuff. Anyway, that's why I like to do one side and then the other. If any, for any reason, I can always refer back to one side. And I learned it the hard way, like the first time I ever did brakes, I took everything apart and then scratching my head, how does it go back together? Little springs and clips and all kinds of stuff. So these are the Brake shoes from um, AutoZone. Same thing, so you gotta. They're the same size physically, but the brake pad material, the lining material is different. So. Well, back when I first got my car, there was a core charge on these things because they used to just reline them. They put new linings on. Them. As you can see, the linings are riveted on to the metal deal here. So, I guess they don't do those do that anymore. Uh, one more thing before I get busy here. Here's the new drums. Okay. The old drums, I don't have it with me, but you can see the wear on the old drum because it has a lip right here, it has a lip here and a slight lip on the inside here because the shoe does not cover 100% of the lip in here, it only covers so much. It's got a little gap on one side and a little gap on the other side. And you can, when you feel a lip, you can feel, yep, it's, it's got some wear on there. So normally what they do, like a brake shop, you take it someplace, they'll put this on a lathe and grind down so much. I don't know how much, but they grind it down. It's all smooth, all brand new again. And uh, you're ready to roll. Also, on your drums, see what it says right here, max diameter. That's the biggest you can resurface these down to. After that, they're no good. Typically, that's why you have to buy new drums is because they're just wore out. So, and there's a way to check that. There's a caliper or brake. Uh, yeah. Caliper, you put it in there and it measures it. 
But uh, try to find a auto parts store that will turn your drums these days. Or turn your front rotors. So, that was cost me $110 for, I think it was $55 each drum. So anyway, it's done. Let me get busy here.